I want to welcome everyone to our live Saturday morning presentation. We've got a lot of information to cover. As you can see by the opening slide, everyone should see my screen. It says the science of nitric oxide therapy. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. There's no way that we're going to cover all the science of nitric oxide therapy, but I want to give you enough of the science of nitric oxide therapy to help enlighten you. And a couple things about today's webinar. I'm going to give you an awful lot of information, and I don't want you to feel like you have to know all this information. I'm recording today's presentation. Uh, Tuesday, it'll go out on our, our, our Tuesday newsletter to everyone. And I will also host this up onto the our Synergy family website. I'll show you specifically where I'm going to place it at the end of today's presentation. That way, if you need to go back and review this information or if you want to share this information with other team members or if you want to share this with your clients, feel free to go ahead and do so. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with our presentation and let's start from the beginning. Back in 1998, the Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to three American researchers who discovered how the lining of your cardiovascular system, what's called the endothelium, converts the amino acid L-arginine into what's called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is the master signaling molecule of your entire cardiovascular system. In fact, your cardiovascular system couldn't work properly without nitric oxide. It's that critical. Well, once that Nobel Prize was awarded, it set off an explosion of research in this area. And today, there are more than 100,000 peer-reviewed clinical studies in the area of nitric oxide therapy. <clears throat> and it's important to understand that because there's, it's just not one study that talks about this. This is a large body of work that continues to grow to help people understand. In fact, I'm gonna show you one of the most recent studies just a couple months ago that shows how nitric oxide actually enhances heart medications and help them to work more effectively. Now, nitric oxide therapy, because that large number of studies that have been done in this area is truly a valid method to addressing the underlying cause of most cardiovascular health issues. That underlying cause is what the medical community refers to as endothelial dysfunction, or in most cases, atherosclerosis. Now, here's a uh, uh, we have this image actually in our Synergy Family website in the resource page. And as you can see over time, damage occurs to the lining of the vascular system, which then increases plaque formation over time. And you can also see that there's a substantial reduction in nitric oxide production, which significantly affects cardiovascular health. And as I've already mentioned, this lining is called the endothelium. When it's healthy, it regulates almost all of your cardiovascular health, but there are four major items that directly damage your endothelium. High blood pressure, high blood sugar levels, LDL cholesterol, or more specifically, very low density lipoprotein and nicotine. And what happens is as that damage occurs, it causes inflammation. The body treats that as an injury, and if it's not treated properly, then it creates what's called a plaque and that plaque grows over time. What is commonly then called atherosclerosis creates a narrowing in the inside of the vascular system and that narrowing presents problems. That narrowing, that large plaque as it ages, becomes brittle, can rupture, create a blood clot, which can then lead to a heart attack or stroke. And as you can see, as we age, we can lose up to 85% of our ability to make nitric oxide. Now, why is nitric oxide so important to your cardiovascular health? Well, specifically, there's three key benefits that come from nitric oxide. And these three key benefits are absolutely critical to cardiovascular health. The first benefit is that nitric oxide relaxes the smooth muscle of the vascular wall, causing what's known as vasodilation for improved blood flow. This is extremely beneficial for the majority of people with high blood pressure. In fact, helping your endothelium produce higher levels of nitric oxide is a natural way to bring your blood pressure back into the normal range. And since high blood pressure is the number one risk factor for strokes and heart attacks, as well as it's the number one diabetic complication, 
This can be a natural method for addressing these issues. And while there can be other issues that cause high blood pressure, sometimes it's kidney function, sometimes there's other things that are going on, but the most common one is the lack of nitric oxide production to naturally relax the smooth muscle of your vascular wall for improved blood flow. Now the second benefit of nitric oxide is that it keeps blood platelet cells from sticking together. And this helps to reduce the risk for strokes and heart attacks. And if you've been watching the news in the last month, there was a big report that came out showing that aspirin for older adults is not very effective in terms of reducing risk for heart attacks and strokes, as well as increases the problem or increases their potential for having bleeding issues that can also become life threatening issues. And the nice thing about nitric oxide is it doesn't have side effects like that. And it naturally does what aspirin, what they try and use aspirin for. Well, nitric oxide naturally keeps blood platelet cells from sticking together. This is also beneficial for individuals who have sickle cell anemia or sickle cell trait because, again, it helps keep blood platelet cells from sticking together. Now, the third benefit of nitric oxide is that when it's at high enough levels over a long enough period of time, it can initiate reparative mechanisms to heal damage done to the endothelium. And this includes the reversal of plaque formations to help prevent vascular inflammation. So as you provide the endothelium with the ingredients that it needs to optimize nitric oxide production, you can begin to heal this damage, returning your endothelium back to a healthier tissue, which then allows you to produce more nitric oxide to continue that healing process. Now, if we're in our 60s and 70s, we're never going to get back to our 20s but it would be nice to be able to get our vascular system back into the 40s and enjoy the benefits of nitric oxide production at that time of our life. When it comes to optimizing the ability of the enzymes of the endothelium to produce higher levels of nitric oxide, these are the following key ingredients, L-arginine, L-citrulline, red grape polyphenol extract, vitamin D3, vitamin K2, and pomegranate fruit concentrate. So we're gonna spend a little time talking about each one of these. Now, arginine is always the first and most important ingredient. And as I've shared earlier, the 1998 Nobel Prize in Medicine gave validity to L-arginine being converted by the endothelium, those enzymes of the endothelium into nitric oxide. And while you can get L-arginine from the food you eat, the easiest method to make sure that you're consuming enough of this amino acid is to use a daily nutritional supplement that contains pure, free-form L-arginine that's also pharmaceutical grade. Now, when they talk about pharmaceutical grade, what that means is that it meets the highest standards set for optimal absorption of this amino acid. And we focus on L-arginine for the creation of nitric oxide, but understand that L-arginine as an amino acid fuels seven different metabolic pathways in your body. So you'll see some information in the internet about if you're over the age of 40, that L-arginine is not good for you, could be detrimental for you. And again, that's misinformation, disingenuous at best, because L-arginine as an amino acid, even outside of the production of nitric oxide, is a critically important amino acid for every person, no matter what their age. Whether male, female, doesn't matter your age. If you're over 40, if you're in your 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond, it still is a critical amino acid to help fuel seven different metabolic pathways within the body. Now, for most people, the use of L-arginine for the creation of nitric oxide is not enough. The conversion of L-arginine to nitric oxide provides you with about a two to three hour window of improved nitric oxide production. And then typically for most people, within four to six hours, they're back to their baseline levels of nitric oxide. So they get a, a temporary increase in blood flow, but they don't get any long lasting benefits or what we would call a therapeutic benefit. This means that you've got to use L-citrulline. L-citrulline as an amino acid is metabolized to yield more L-arginine to enhance the ability of the enzymes of the endothelium to produce higher levels of nitric oxide and do it over a much longer period of time. 
I put up on the screen the metabolic pathway, and you can see the red circle. L-citrulline is critically important for keeping the nitric oxide pathway going. Now, the next key ingredient is what's called red grape polyphenol extract. It's important to understand that this is a polyphenol, but has no alcohol content to it. And the reason why this is important is because it actually helps to reduce the oxidation of LDL cholesterol, which then protects against arterial damage. In fact, oxidized LDL, more specifically oxidized very low density lipoprotein, is the main culprit of vascular inflammation that then leads to plaque formation. So if you can prevent the oxidation of that, you can then prevent inflammation and you can then prevent plaque formation. The next two ingredients are vitamin D3 and vitamin K2, and I put them together because they work together to regulate calcium levels in your body, especially calcium levels in the bloodstream. And the reason why this is important is the enzymatic production of nitric oxide by your endothelium, the enzymes of the endothelium, it's a calcium dependent reaction. So calcium has to be there for that reaction to occur properly. And then vitamin D3 by itself supports healthy cardiovascular function and inflammatory response. And as people are able to increase their vitamin D levels in their bloodstream, it can have a profound benefit in helping to prevent diabetic complications, especially in certain ethnic groups like blacks and, and Hispanic, as well as here white Caucasians. So every person can benefit by increased levels of vitamin D in their bloodstream. Now for vitamin K, it's important to understand the form of vitamin K that's being used. There's basically two forms. There's vitamin K1, which is used by a lot of companies because it's a cheaper form of vitamin K to use. The problem is vitamin K1 doesn't support vascular health and it may actually interfere with blood thinning medications. And unfortunately, the medical profession a lot of times does not know the difference between vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. So they see vitamin K, and unless they know which form of vitamin K it is, they usually associate it with you know, interfering with blood thinning medications. And so they may not want a person to be on a product that has a vitamin K component to it unless they understand that it's vitamin K2, which is just the opposite from K1. Vitamin K2 is actually the correct form that you want because it can significantly improve arterial and cardiovascular health, as well as it plays an important role in preventing the calcification of your arteries, as well as calcification of soft tissues like the heart, lungs, and kidneys. And then we have pomegranate fruit concentrate. This is an important ingredient to have because it actually enhances the enzymatic activity of the endothelium. There are plenty of peer-reviewed clinical studies that show just use of pomegranate fruit concentrate has been shown to reverse plaque formations within the vascular system because of its ability to increase nitric oxide production. So those are the six key ingredients that a person would want to have in any kind of nitric oxide supplementation program that they're trying to implement. Now, what I like to do is I like to highlight five cardiovascular health issues so that you can see how the proper application of nitric oxide therapy could be beneficial to that individual with those conditions. So we're gonna start with high blood pressure because it's the number one risk factor for strokes and heart attacks as well as it's the leading cause of atherosclerosis that contributes to endothelial dysfunction. So as your vascular system narrows, this increases the resistance to blood flow, causing an elevation in blood pressure. So as you can see by this uh, image of the vessel down here, when, you, when, when your vascular system narrows, it's increasing resistance to blood flow which then is increasing your blood pressure. So to counter this, you need to reduce this resistance to blood flow. So nitric oxide does this by relaxing the smooth muscle of the vascular wall, which then lowers the resistance to blood flow. And for many, this one simple step helps to return their blood pressure back into the normal range.
Now, the, uh, well, here would be a good example of a person who's benefited. I've got up, up on the screen a picture of my wife and myself. And back in 2009, my wife was diagnosed with high blood pressure. At that time, her blood pressure reading was 160 over 90. And her doctor suggested that she try some lifestyle changes to lower her blood pressure before resorting to taking some type of medication to address the issue. Well, she decided to apply nitric oxide therapy. And as she did that, her blood pressure lowered to 112 over 68, was 160 over 90. Nitric oxide therapy took it down to 112 over 68. And for the last 10 years, she's been able to maintain this excellent blood pressure reading all by properly nourishing her endothelium with the ingredients that it needs to optimize nitric oxide production. She uses those six ingredients that we talked about to help her see the benefits of nitric oxide therapy as it relates to her blood pressure. Now, the next major cardiovascular health issue is diabetes. And as I talked about, you know, high blood sugar causes direct damage to the lining of the vascular system. And for most diabetics, their complications are a result of this cumulative damage over time. So up on the screen, I've got a picture of David Munoz and his mom, Marta. Now, David lost his mom, Marta, in 1992, 1992 due to the complications of diabetes. Now, that date, 1992, is significant. The Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded in 1998. So at that time, her physicians would have no idea about the importance and the benefits of nitric oxide therapy. Well, David's dad was headed down the same pathway. And David was also diagnosed as pre-diabetic, meaning that his blood sugar levels were elevated, but not yet high enough to classify him as a diabetic. Well, David stumbled upon information about nitric oxide therapy and decided to try it for himself. And one of the first things that he saw was his blood sugar stabilized. He had improved cognitive function and better energy, so David decided to introduce his dad to nitric oxide therapy. And in four months, his dad's blood sugar went from 210 to 120. His constipation problems disappeared. His skin discoloration cleared up. He had more energy, and David's dad started doing things like gardening that he hadn't done in years. Before that, he just basically stayed inside his house, existed, as opposed to living. And so nitric oxide therapy helped him live again where he was outside doing things that he loved doing that he hadn't done in years. Now, cognitive function is a huge issue, especially for older adults. And for boomers, one of the issues is taking care of their parents who are suffering from cognitive function issues like Alzheimer's disease, and then having a fear that they're gonna head down the same pathway as their parents. So how does nitric oxide therapy apply to this? Well, every study that we know of that shows improvement in blood flow to the brain improves cognitive function. And the bottom line to nitric oxide therapy is improved blood flow. Plus there's emerging science that shows that endothelial, fun endothelial dysfunction plays a contributing factor in the start and progression of Alzheimer's disease which means anything that you can do to improve the health of your endothelium to optimize nitric oxide production for improved blood flow can significantly, re can significantly reduce your risk for cognitive issues. Now, wound healing is a major issue, especially for older adults and for the diabetic, uh, diabetic community. So I pulled this quote from the National Institutes of Health, and I'm gonna read it, and then I'll give you the easy translation of what this means. Arginine is a semi-essential amino acid that is required during periods of maximal growth, severe stress, and injury. Arginine has many effects in the body, including modulation of immune function, wound healing, hormone secretion, vascular tone, and endothelial function. Arginine is also a precursor to proline, and as such, sufficient arginine levels are needed to support collagen deposition, angiogenesis, and wound contraction. Now, before I interpret that, I just want to make a comment on angiogenesis so that you know what that means. Angiogenesis is a function of your endothelium to create capillary beds. For an athlete who gains muscle tissue, 
to you, for you as you gain muscle tissue to feed that muscle, you have to create capillary beds. That's a function of the endothelium. If you're going to, again, from a wound healing standpoint, heal a wound, you have to repair capillaries. And so that's a function of the endothelium. So what all that meant is that when it comes to wound healing, the amino acid L-arginine, nitric oxide, and your endothelium are all involved in that wound healing process. It's critical. Now, we're going to talk about ED or erectile dysfunction in men. There are two forces at work. There's what's called vasodilation and vasoconstriction. So for a man to have an erection, he needs nitric oxide to start and maintain the vasodilation side of the equation. If his nitric oxide levels are low, then he's going to have no erection. If his nitric oxide levels are reduced, then he can most likely start the erection but not maintain it. And the reason why is this counterbalancing force, which is known as vasoconstriction. Without it, especially young men, would be walking around with an erection all day long. That would be both embarrassing and definitely uncomfortable. Now, the way that drugs like Viagra and Cialis work is that they use a chemical to disable the vasoconstriction side of the equation. Well, it works until a man's nitric oxide levels in their bloodstream get so low that they can no longer create the needed vasodilation, which means that drugs like Viagra don't address the underlying cause which for most men is endothelial dysfunction and lack of sufficient nitric oxide production. So nitric oxide therapy helps to address this issue by first optimizing nitric oxide production, which then leads to increasing baseline levels of nitric oxide, which can then initiate repair mechanisms to heal damage done to the endothelium, which then allows for more of the endothelium, if properly nourished, to create more nitric oxide. And the result for men will be more morning erections like they had when they were younger. Now, I pulled up this slide for Sid Milch. Sid is an 83-year-old Army veteran. And in 2015, he discovered nitric oxide therapy. At that time, he had already had his second mild heart attack. He had a stint placed in one of his arteries. He had still had angina even with the stint. He had severe arthritis in his left hip, right shoulder, and right hand, and he also suffered from high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, and he wore eyeglasses all the time. So I want to focus on the severe arthritis in his left hip, right shoulder, and right hand. That arthritis was so severe that he had significant pain, and he couldn't walk more than a couple blocks without pain. It was disabling and limited much of his daily activity. Well, he applied nitric oxide therapy. And you can see, and this is documented by the VA hospital that he goes to, his angina went away. His blood pressure that used to be 170 over 75 is now 112 over 62. For an 83-year-old man to have a blood pressure 112 over 62 is significant. You can see that his triglycerides saw a dramatic decrease. Still high at 226, but definitely way down from 554. His A1C decreased to the point where his physician cut his diabetic medications by two thirds. His cholesterol number wasn't that bad at 160, but now it's 110. But here, he no longer has arthritic pain in his hip, shoulder, and hand. He can walk as far as he wants to without pain. He actually goes to the gym twice a week. Now, what did he have? He had osteoarthritis. What used to be a disabling factor in his life is no longer a disabling factor because of nitric oxide therapy and the increased blood flow that goes to his hip, shoulder, and hand, allowing them to function better. I also wanted to pull up Donald Clark. In 2007, Donald was diagnosed with what's called peripheral arterial disease, or commonly called PAD. It dramatically affected his health. Now, this disease is a narrowing of the peripheral arteries in the legs, usually due to atherosclerosis, which again is that buildup of plaque formations, and it re results in a reduction in blood flow and an increased potential for blood clots that could lead to a heart attack or stroke. Now, for Donald, his symptoms 
were severe leg pain, especially if he did any kind of activity. Well, his doctor suggested that he use nitric oxide therapy by consuming the amino acid L-arginine to naturally address this issue. So he followed what his doctor recommended. This is his initial test. This is his test six weeks later. And six weeks after applying L-arginine and nitric oxide therapy, Donald had a 50% improvement in blood flow. And then Donald came across additional information on nitric oxide therapy that caused him to add additional ingredients to his program. So more than just L-arginine, he began to incorporate those other five ingredients that we talked about. And so here is Donald's ABI test from 2015. And these readings from that test placed Donald at the high end of the normal range and prompted his physician to make the comment that Donald now had, quote, the arteries of a 29-year-old, end of quote. Now, why is that, quote, significant? Because at that time, Donald was in his 60s. And so for a person who's in his 60s to have your physician tell you that you have the arteries of a 29-year-old, especially after you've had PA, PAD and significant problems, is remarkable to what nitric oxide therapy could do to help restore the vascular health within the arteries and veins of his legs. Now, I wanted to pull this up. This is from Science Daily. Notice the title, heart disease severity may depend upon nitric oxide levels. Study finds nitric oxide may also determine drug efficacy. Now, here's the date. May 14th, 2018. So that is just slightly, let's see, we're in April. So that's not quite a year ago. It's from Case Western Reserve University. Let me read the summary. The most common heart medications may get an assist from nitric oxide circulating in the body, according to a new study. Researchers showed that nitric oxide may help commonly used dr heart drugs maximize their benefits while improving heart function. In turn, the study found that nitric oxide deficiencies could underlie heart failure while tilting drug effects toward more harmful pathways and side effects. I found that study to be absolutely phenomenal from the standpoint that even for a person who is on some type of heart medication, could still derive a benefit from nitric oxide therapy by helping their medication to work more effectively. And all I can tell you from an anecdotal standpoint is that many clients that I've worked with that are on heart medications, as they've applied nitric oxide therapy, they've been able to see significant improvements where they've been either able to get off of medications completely or substantially reduce the amount of medication that they're taking. I could go back to Sid Milch. When Sid first started down this route for nitric oxide therapy, he was on multiple medications from the VA. And as nitric oxide therapy improved his vascular health, almost all those medications except for what he was using for diabetes were eliminated. And even the medications that he was using for his diabetes, his physician reduce the amount by two thirds. That's the power of nitric oxide therapy to help people improve their vascular health, even for those that are using medications, that this process of creating nitric oxide can help those medications, again, work more effectively, as well as help to mediate some of the side effects that come from those medications. Now, as I've shared in previous, email, or in previous Saturday presentations, one of our marketing strategies is what we call the Million Lives Project. The goal of the Million Lives Project is to help educate a million people or more on how nitric oxide therapy can naturally address most cardiovascular health concerns. And we talk about nitric oxide therapy. And the reason why we talk nitric oxide therapy is because it allows us to make statements and provide information that won't get us into trouble, meaning that we don't want to say a proc does these things as opposed to nitric oxide therapy. So we always talk in terms of nitric oxide therapy. And, and when you talk in terms of nitric oxide therapy, your opportunity to create interest 
becomes significantly greater because one, most people have never heard of nitric oxide therapy. So they want to know, well, what is this? And you can begin to use some of the resources, resources that I'm going to begin to show you that are available to you to help educate them in this area, as well as they don't feel like you're trying to sell them something as a product. Now, when you talk to people about nitric oxide therapy and the Million Lives Project, well, there's a couple resources that we've created. One is our ebook, Empower Your Heart Through Breakthrough Nitric Oxide Therapy. It's not a physical book, it's an ebook. Now you can find this ebook on the resource page of our Synergy family. I'll show you in a little bit exactly where it's located. In addition to that, we've created a wide range of videos that help you as well as people that you know understand how nitric oxide therapy addresses certain types of cardiovascular health issues as well as other issues. So you can see we've got a video on high blood pressure how nitric oxide therapy benefits diabetic complications, erectile dysfunction, cognitive function, wound healing, how it can help black Americans deal with cardiovascular issues, uh, how it can improve athletic performance, and then a general overview of nitric oxide therapy. So in today's presentation, I gave you a very limited snapshot of high blood pressure and diabetic complications and ED and cognitive function and wound healing, well, these videos go into much more extensive uh, information for people to understand. And then we've also created several videos to help you understand the importance of L-arginine, L-citrulline, and unfortunately, misinformation that's used to promote other nitric oxide supplements. So you've got the truth about L-arginine. That video was specifically produced to counter the misinformation that Dr. Nathan Bryant and the proc that he has, Neo40, which goes down a different pathway for the creation of nitric oxide. In today's presentation, I showed you the endothelial pathway through, to create nitric oxide through the amino acid L-arginine. Now there's another pathway that can be used. It's a valid pathway for the creation of nitric oxide. It's called the nitrate nitrite pathway. Beetroot is commonly used because it's a nitrate. Nitrates are converted to nitrites in your mouth. Nitrites are then converted to nitric oxide. But if you use only L-arginine by itself, it's short-lived as we talked about in today's presentation. If you use only beetroot by itself, it's short-lived, and it creates a waste product called ammonia, which your body doesn't like, needs the rid, and so if you don't have L-arginine, L-arginine is involved in the ureic acid cycle to help clear your body of ammonia, waste products. So Dr. Nathan Bryant, in his marketing for his product, Neo40, and trying to promote the nitrate nitrite pathway through beetroot, would tell people that if you're at the age of 40 or older, the endothelial pathway is dysfunctional at best or could be actually uh, detrimental to you. Well, I got so fed up with that misinformation, I felt it was completely disingenuous because one of the ingredients that Dr. Nathan Bryant uses in his product, Neo40, is L-citrulline. As you saw in today's presentation, L-citrulline does two things. One, if, there's no, if you're lacking L-arginine, then the body will convert L-citrulline into L-arginine and go down that same pathway that Dr. Nathan Bryant is telling people is dysfunctional. As well as if L-arginine is present, then L-citrulline helps to continue the cycle of creating nitric oxide. So L-citrulline is a critical component for both the nitrate nitrite pathway as well as the L-arginine pathway because you need it to extend the ability to create nitric oxide over a longer period of time. So this video, The Truth About L-Arginine, goes into, those, uh, into that whole process, as well as it addresses a major study that was done that gave L-Arginine a black eye in relationship, in relationship to people who had heart attacks. That's the Ho John Hopkins uh, study. And in the John Hopkins study, they used an, L, an L-arginine supplement with people who had heart attacks. And so they had a placebo group 
in an L arginine group. And what they found as the study progressed is that the people in the L arginine group had more heart attacks, post heart attacks, than the placebo group. So they stopped their study early. And the press around that study was L arginine is not good for people who've had a heart attack. And so they shouldn't be using it. It's why you see that warning label on all L arginine products. Now, if you drill down into the John Hopkins study, you'll find that the actual L arginine that they use was a synthetic L arginine that also used a carrier molecule to get it into the bloodstream called HCl, hydrochloride. That in the study, they were giving their, uh, uh, their patients three grams of L arginine three times a day. So they were giving them nine grams of L arginine. Now, it's not nine grams of pharmaceutical grade L arginine. It was nine grams of a synthetic L arginine that had a carrier molecule called HCl to, absorb, to increase absorption. Well, the weight of the HCl is about equal to the weight of the L arginine. So the individuals were getting about 4.5 grams of L arginine and about 4.5 grams of hydrochloride. Now, this is significant because hydrochloride reduces potassium levels in the bloodstream. Why is that important? Because most people who've had a heart attack are most likely on medications that also affect their potassium levels. And in a heart contraction or any muscle contraction, sodium is involved in the contraction, but potassium is needed for, heart, for muscle relaxation. And if you reduce potassium levels, then you automatically put a person at risk for spasm and if it's a heart muscle that's, it's, you know, if, you're, if your leg muscle spasms on you, then you can, you know, stretch it out. But if your heart muscle spasms on you, there's no way you can stretch that out. That can then trigger a heart attack. And so the culprit in the study was most likely not the L arginine. The culprit in the study was most likely the hydrochloride. Now, again, it's important to have a knowledge of this information so that if you have an individual that says to you, well, you know, is it safe? You know, my dad's had a heart attack. You know, I read these, this information. Well, my suggestion to you is that you don't tell them about the John Hopkins study. You tell them, hey, I'm going to send you this video called The Truth About L. Arginine. I want you to watch that video because it addresses that study. And then after you get the full information, then you make a decision, you and your dad make a decision about whether the, you want to use an l arginine product to harness the benefits of nitric oxide therapy. Now, we also have Dr. Borger, who makes certain types of claims and statements with regards to his product versus our product of choice. And that's where the next part of this presentation is going to go to, product of choice. So you've got that for Dr. Borger, the truth about Dr. Borger and his statements. You've got the truth about the statements that are made by L, by L arginine plus versus pro arginine plus. And then you've got current videos that I've done on our product of choice, pro arginine plus, clinically proven, 262 quality assurance steps, and the pro arginine plus advantage. Because you're going to get asked as you help people understand nitric oxide therapy and how it can address their different cardiovascular health issues, you're going to get a question, is there a product that can help me restore my nitric oxide levels? There are hundreds of products now in the marketplace. This has become a big industry. Well, our product of choice is Pro Arch 9 Plus. And the reason why, it's the only L Arch 9 supplement recognized by the medical community. Been listed now for the last six consecutive years. And the first line quote has always been the same. Pro Arginine Plus is the highest quality L Arginine supplement in the world. End of quote. Now, I read that statement, but I didn't create the statement. That's the statement that comes from the medical community putting validity to Pro Arginine Plus as the highest quality L Arginine supplement in the world. Additionally, Pro Arginine Plus is the only clinically proven L Arginine supplement in the marketplace. Now, it's clinically proven in two areas. First off, it's clinically proven to rapidly increase nitric oxide levels over and above what would happen with just L Arginine alone. 
So not only do you get higher levels of nitric oxide, but you also get it more rapidly. And then secondly, it's clinically proven to inhibit vascular inflammation. Now it does it in two specific ways. I'll talk about it in today's video. And then Synergy actually has information in, on their website about these two aspects. First off, the ingredients within ProArtsine Plus actually inhibit the oxidation of very low density level protein. Again, if you remember back to our presentation today, I talked about the importance of certain ingredients, especially grape polyphenol extract, and how that's important for inhibiting the oxidation of low density lipoprotein. In addition, ProArtsine Plus not only in not only prevents the oxidation of very low density lipoprotein, but it also inhibits what's called myeloperoxidase. Now, if a person has inflammation of the vascular system, which a lot of people do, then white blood cells get involved in this and they produce an enzyme called myeloperoxidase. Well, why is that important? Well, myeloperoxidase suppresses nitric oxide expression in the vascular system. ProArtsin Plus inhibits myeloperoxidase from suppressing nitric oxide. So it's significantly important because a lot of people have vascular inflammation, so they have myeloperoxidase in their system as a response to their white blood cells, and that myeloperoxidase is suppressing nitric oxide. Well, ProArtsin Plus is clinically proven to inhibit myeloperoxidase from affecting nitric oxide. So a product that not only produces higher levels of nitric oxide, but also inhibits things that prevent nitric oxide from, re from acting properly, as well as reducing vascular inflammation by reducing you know, the probability of oxidized low-density lipoprotein. And then the other thing, and I personally have been in the health and fitness industry for over 30 years, I used to own a very large health club operation here in the western suburbs of Chicago, and I used to get approached all the time wanting me to carry nutritional supplements. And unfortunately, the reality of the nutrition supplement industry is that a lot of the products don't meet label claims. Well, what I love about our product of choice, ProArgent Plus, is it's made by Nature Sunshine Procs, our parent company who owns Synergy Worldwide. And there's 262 verified quality assurance steps that go into the manufacturing of that product. Verified because it's audited by the FDA. Although the FDA does not approve nutritional supplements, the manufacturing facility, Nature Sunshine, is an FDA audited facility. So all those quality assurance steps are audited by the FDA. And I know then that I and my clients are always going to get the same reproducible results. And if for some reason they don't, and it doesn't meet their expectations, then the nice thing about ProArch9 Plus is there's a 120-day money-back guarantee on their initial purchase. So with that said, do I have any questions from anyone with regards to the information that I've shared with you today? Uh, you'll have to go in and either unmute yourself or you can type that in the chat box and I can read it in the chat box. Hey, good morning, Dan. This is David. Yes, David. Hey, thank you for the information, Dan. It's always so refreshing to hear uh, new information and uh, just get a refresher course and especially the new information you uh, provide about that study in 2018 that's more recent and more relevant and reinforces uh, what we talk about uh, when we talk about nitric oxide therapy. So it's right up my alley, and, and thank you for the information. Obviously, it's something I'm going to be using uh, myself when I talk to my clients. Great. Thank you, David. And as I shared at the beginning of our presentation today, I've recorded today's presentation. I'll put that up on – in fact, let me – why we take other questions, let me close out this, go into the Internet. So you, we have this page called Our Synergy Family. It's a website that we put up to provide you with information to be able to help you grow your Synergy business. And if you click on the icon for resources, it's gonna open up this page. And the first part of the, you know, you can scroll down the page, we have a lot of great information, but the first section is on nitric oxide therapy. And so here is the link, if you click on this image, that's the link to the PDF ebook 
on nitric oxide therapy. And then we've got a recorded video on nitric oxide therapy that you could use. Here is the unique selling properties of ProArgin Plus, what I've shared with you in today's presentation. Instruction sheets on how to use it. I love this, P I love this PDF, you can click on it. And this is a, uh, something that Synergy put out uh, oh, maybe about six months ago, where you can see how ProArgin Plus relates to other key supplements in the nitric oxide industry. And you can see that there's only two other products that even come close to the nitric oxide levels of, of ProArgin Plus. Most all the other products are either a half or a third or even a quarter of the production of nitric oxide. And so this is a great resource tool for you. And then today's webinar, I will put up uh, on this page so that you have it uh, to be able to, uh, to, to uh, refer back to it to help educate you. Now, anyone else with any questions before we say goodbye? Yes, this is Dr. Donald Brooks. Yes, Dr. Brooks. Uh, I just didn't understand uh, whether or not you addressed the uh, uh, aspect of the dosage. Okay. For the, right. for, the different, for the different ones that you've mentioned. Sure. Okay. I'm glad that you brought that up. Now, I've got two instruction sheets here, Dr. Brooks, that if you go to, again, our Synergy family, click on resources and go to the resource page, there's an instruction sheet here in English. There's also in Spanish. This is for an instruction sheet for someone who's maybe using the big jumbo jar. Now, Synergy has made the decision to do away with the 30 serving canisters. Uh, currently, they're not producing the canisters anymore, so once they run out of the canisters in the warehouse, the canisters will no longer be available. Now, in this instruction sheet, in fact, let me click on it, you can see that this is typically what I recommend to my clients when they first get started. So if they're using the 30 serving canisters or if they're using the big jumbo jar, this is what I recommend that they start with a half a scoop, do that for the first three days. They're only doing it one time a day. And then on day four, we bump that up to one scoop first thing in the morning. And then on day seven, we go to a scoop and a half where we do one scoop in the morning and then a half a scoop late afternoon or early evening. Now, from my experience, I've found that to be pretty successful for most people. Some might go to two scoops where they do one scoop in the morning, one scoop in the late afternoon or early evening. Very seldom have I ever gone beyond that. Occasionally I have. I've got a couple clients that were basically sent home to die by the medical community because there wasn't any further that the medical community could do for them. And so they wanted to apply nitric oxide therapy, wanted to be aggressive with it, and I built them up to four scoops. Now, I didn't start them at four scoops. I still used the same progression in the first week. And then from a scoop and a half, we went to two scoops, and then we went to three scoops in the third week, and then we went to four scoops in the fourth week. And they saw significant improvements in their vascular health. Now, they no longer do four scoops. Most of them are back to doing a scoop and a half to two scoops on a daily basis because they don't need to be as aggressive. They've seen the benefits and now we go into what we call a maintenance program. And so a maintenance program could be just one scoop on a daily basis. Now also on that resource page, if you're using the packets, so for those that are using the boxes, which are 30 individually wrapped sticks in a box, so each stick is a serving, then here is the instruction sheet for people using packets. One packet for the first four days, and then two packets starting on day five, where they do one packet in the morning and the other packet in the late afternoon or early evening. You can try and get a half a scoop out of a packet. It's not easy. The easiest way that I've found to do that is to take your packet, put it on a table service, shake it back and forth uh, so that you can balance out the powder in the packet, then fold your packet in half, tear off the one end, pour the contents in, and then save the rest of the packet for the next day. Uh, again, it's, it's, a, it, it's a, a, a skill <laughs> that, that you can learn how to do that pretty effectively. Uh, but uh, again, I'm just going to use this here instruction sheet for people that are getting packets from me in the future. And then for ones that get the jumbo jar, I'll use the other 
uh, instruction sheet here, the general instruction sheet for that. Does that help, Dr. Brooks? Yeah, that, yes, yeah, that helps quite a bit. Uh, the main reason is because uh, it's kind of hard to tell people, uh, you know, you need to start off on two scoops a day and continue on for however long. Uh, but at the same time, the recommended dosage that's on the label is one scoop a day. And then when you do that, you don't know if they're getting exactly what they need. Correct. Yeah. And so, and so a couple things with what you just said. I also do this. I, I, I go through this process because when people take too much L-arginine, it doesn't matter whether it's ProArginine Plus or some other product. If you take too much L-arginine initially, you may get loose stools or diarrhea because nitric yeah, oxide. Because that's not a bad thing. <laughs> no, no, it's not. But for some people, if they're not aware of that, I mean, for for people who are constipated, then that's a good thing. But for people who have normal bowel movements and they're and they're going to work, and now all of a sudden they have to go in their pants, that's not a good thing either. And and so, well, well, that's true. so what I found from experience is that if we just start slow, half a scoop, build to one scoop, build to a scoop and a half. I usually don't find people having that problem with loose stools and diarrhea. Occasionally it would happen, but like out of a hundred people, it might happen one time, even if it's that. Mm -hmm. And so this way we can adapt their system to nitric oxide, get them to a level that can have a therapeutic benefit for helping them see improvements in their health. And then after three, four, five months on the product at a scoop and a half or two scoops, they can back down to one scoop on a daily basis, and if that maintains their health gains, then just do one scoop. Just like you eat food every day to nourish your body, tape one scoop of ProArgin Plus to nourish your endothelium with the exact ingredients that it needs to optimize nitric oxide production, as well as give you the other benefit of preventing vascular inflammation. Mm -hmm. And then- uh, there's, one, there's one other question. Uh, mm -hmm. I normally take mine just all at one time, just drink it down, get it over with. Yep. But but uh, some people ask me a lot of times, can I just sip on it for a while? Yes. I my you're like you're like my wife. She puts it in the glass and drinks it all at one time. I prefer right. to sip mine over about a. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I do a I do a scoop and a half of Prochain Plus with one packet of E9. And I mix that up, and then I drink that over about a 35-minute period. And, mm -hmm. and I prefer to drink it over time, and you're going to have the same benefit. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate it. You're welcome. And then the last thing I'll say on this is I've not found from my experience that it makes a difference whether it's men or women, and it doesn't matter what their weight is. Again, I use the same protocol, and right. I found, uh, again, good results using this protocol for people. Okay, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Anyone else with any questions before we say goodbye? All right, well, I wanna thank you. Uh, again, we've recorded this presentation and it will go up uh, on my YouTube, our, I should say our, U our Synergy Family YouTube channel on Monday and then on Tuesday, it will go out in the newsletter that we have. Thank you everyone. Have a blessed Saturday. We'll talk to you next Saturday, same time.